What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Open Mic Podcast, the official podcast of the Open Mic app, coming soon to an app store near you. But in the meantime, let's hear from the artists. The artist who joined me today is an ambitious recording artist by the name of Iris Colton. You can tell how passionate he is about his craft when he talks about persisting as a new artist, getting views on releases, and playing gigs. Take a listen to his most recent single, The Love October Bill. I'm doing well. So thanks for joining us today. Uh, I was looking through some of your content on Spotify, and I I really liked the single that you have out now, Don't Let Me Go. Can you tell us a little bit about what your inspiration behind that song was and really what that means to you? Well, yeah, sure. Well, thank you for having me, number one. Um, Number two, uh, yeah, that song kind of, uh, it was kind of like sitting in the attic for a while, and I wrote it in just the melody for it in like 2012 and just kind of sat there and it, it, it has so much meaning currently that I didn't want to do anything with it then because nothing really hit me to really push it out and deliver it how it should be felt. So that's just all about, you know, finding that one, that one person that makes you who you really are. Mm. and not wanting to lose them because you're afraid of losing yourself of how they made you feel. That's interesting. So if you haven't heard that, please go check that out now. It's uh, available everywhere, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Spotify, Apple Music. Yeah, go peep that for sure. Um, And then you also have the song Love, The Love October Built. And I I know like the fall and October seems to be a theme that you like to incorporate into the the music that you release. And you have an EP with a similar name coming out um, pretty soon. We'll talk about that later, but you let's talk a little bit about this song first. All right. Yeah. The, uh, the love October built. Um, uh, That one, it's only about a year and a half old. It kind of was just sitting once again in my head for a while. I had the melody and, um, very, in my opinion, very heavily, I would say, just it, it, whenever something happens in your life that you have no words to describe how it felt, sometimes uh, with paintings or poetry, uh, music's a way to go as well. It's another avenue down that road. And I wrote it as if it was a story. So that's why the kind of different title, it's not, you know, it's kind of longer, you know. So the Love October Belt, almost as if it was a storybook being read. And that's just about, you know, finding who you are and someone helping you find out who you are. And just the story of being in love and being happy of where you are in your life. And yes, October does play a huge role in um, in my life. And so many great things have happened. And it's just it's just fitting for me that that's another chapter in my life that needs to be told. 
Right now, and I was very happy to see that you good you got a good amount of coverage on that song. You had a good amount of plays um, for artists out there that are constantly releasing their songs and and not getting as many plays as they would like. Um, do you want to share some of the, of your tips on on how you go about promoting a song that you release? Yeah, definitely. Um, I have uh, I have some musician friends who always ask, you know, this one has you know. 20,000 streams and all this and how did that happen well right it a lot of people say it doesn't happen overnight but sometimes when you put the footwork in it does and you know social media is a huge thing nowadays but in my opinion what helped me generate as much steam with it as I did it's it's doing the old-fashioned footwork with it you know it's and now flyers it's I have a little business card that I hand out everywhere I go and They literally just have my picture on it, the song, where you can get it. And, you know, even promotional things. Like if you wanted to do like, hey, I'm going to, you know, first 10 people to do this, I'll send you a shirt or whatever. I'll do something. I'll whatever it takes. You got to do that kind of work in order to make it seem more personal. Because whenever you make something personal and you make people feel that they're listened to, that's how they listen to you. So it's just about the respect of getting it and giving it back. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad you described it in that way because how I think about being a successful artist, a lot of times you have to have a business mind too. You know, it's not just about creating the next best song. If you, if you want to get views on it, I mean, from an artistic point of view, sure that that works. But uh, if you really want to be a successful artist in the sense that you can generate some sort of income from your from your craft and you get the views that you want on your releases, you have to be a, a business person in, in many ways. And uh, it, I'm happy to hear that you're, you're putting in that, that footwork and handing out flyers and, and making connections. Um, would you say that's more important than social media or maybe not more important, but would you say that it, maybe it's underemphasized these days? Um, yeah, I do. Uh, what it comes down to really is no one's reinventing the wheel. No one is, you know, saying this is the better way of doing things. There's always the original way of doing it. Sometimes it works out best. So when you look at it from that aspect, you got to keep in mind that when you're releasing, whether it's a song, um, you know, a short film or poetry or painting, whatever in the art form or even in life, you have to remember how people have done it for years and why they were so successful. And you know, maybe try that. And you can always try the new avenues. You can try the social media. You can do whatever you can. But when it comes down to it, I found out that, you know, walking in a busy mall or on the side of the street and seeing a band t-shirt or seeing a billboard is going to help me get more, you know, in tune of what it is rather than, you know, oh, I found someone on Instagram. Right. It's, it's, you gotta, you just have to do more than that if, if you want to be a successful artist. And before you, you talked a little bit about um, selling maybe a, a t-shirt um, as a promotional item and you, and you spoke to me about your friends at my audio swag. Uh, can you tell us about, um, about that platform and, and how they helped you out in, in creating your own online store? Oh, sure. Yes, definitely. Um, I've been currently working with a producer, uh, who's very successful. His name is uh, Mr. Mig, M-I-G. He's local in the Philly area. And uh, he kind of just reached out and talked about um, creating a song. And the song was already made and it was a demo. And I sent it over to him and he said, you know, if I don't like it, we're not going to work together. You know, we'll... And he listened to it. He's like, let's get in the booth. Let's do it. And that's the song you hear. And he's been more than supportive of this music journey I've been going through. And when it came down to wanting to promote, I talked about with him, you know, t-shirts and designs and everything like that. And he said, you know, he has his own, you know, collaboration, uh, I guess you'd say t-shirt company. And this website is myaudioswag.com. And I checked it out and I thought it was pretty cool because I honestly didn't have to do much for it except, then logos and you know talk it up and that's all really I had to do and there's over I think 12 designs on there and you know it's going really well and you know just I think making the connections with people is what matters most in this industry at least 
Yeah, that's that's really dope. And it, dope, and it seems like he he was able to hook you up uh, with your own online store, which is a lot of times it's a, it's a hard thing to, to to go about, especially if you're you're focusing a lot of your time on on just making your music. And I, I checked out some of your your hoodies that you have for sale on there and your other promotional merch, and uh, it looks look very cool. Awesome, thank you. Yes, definitely. And we uh, made sure to incorporate uh, the My Audio Swag logo somewhere on there because I mean, you know what? It's it is a collaboration piece and I am super stoked about it. And it's awesome that it's going this Avenue and not, you know, just my merch. It's like, you know, sometimes you have a, a bigger name on it. It's, it, it helps promote them as well. And, you know, I'm all about, you know, giving back. So that's, that's a huge plus in my book. Right. So, so tell me a little bit about the, the venues that you played at. Uh, I know you're, uh, you're currently performing in, in places around the Jersey shore um, so how did you get your foot in the door playing at these small venues? And, um, I, I guess where, where have you been playing so far? All right. Well, um, I've, uh, my being an acoustic singer songwriter, it, you know, you're not going to be opening up anywhere big, but that I wouldn't want that to start out. I've performed numerous places over the past 10 years, but always with a band. I never, ever did any solo work and it just wasn't my thing. And then with these songs, they were so personal. I needed it to be in a solo environment and a little more, what's the word I'm looking for? A little more intimate. Yeah. So playing in places like, you know, a bar, I played at the Brighton bar in uh, Long Branch, New Jersey. Um, I played a festival. I played the uh, Jersey shore festival up in uh, seaside Heights. That was pretty cool. And, you know, I had a couple other shows. There's one in New York, uh, that was my very first show I ever played um, at Caffeine Underground. That place is, it's different, but it's definitely an experience that you should definitely, if you're ever in the New York area, check out that place. It's There's no stage. There's just, you go up and, you know, you're pretty much moving tables to play, but <laughs> it's it's as intimate as it can get. And I think starting out, that's what I needed. And, you know, it's having great responses. And, you know, you play, you know, a hundred shows to nobody but family and friends but that doesn't matter it's just about the experience of getting up there and getting your name out there so these places that have taken me in you know kudos to you guys you guys are awesome oh 100 percent. a lot of times it, it doesn't especially when you're just starting out it doesn't matter if you have a, a big crowd size it's just that opportunity a lot of times for these small venues to allow artists to get their foot in the door and just really nail down their performance. Uh, I mean, you're, you're only as good as your, your, your performance and, and the more practice you get doing that, that these small venues uh, allow you to do, then that's, that's really how you grow as an artist. Well, for sure. Yeah, definitely. So tell us a little bit more about the, uh, the, the Jersey shore music festival. Was that a fun time? It was, you know, um, it just, it started out more like a, um, I, I found the the website for it and I was all excited to maybe try to get in on the bill. And it, I had reasons for going up there that weren't even my own. It was just, I growing up on, you know, MTV and the Jersey shore. I, I loved watching that show and I was like, dang, it was so cool to get up there and just see the house and see where they partied and, you know, my situation, all those guys. And, you know, I was big on MTV growing up and, Oh, so it, it was found out the, that. the cast of Jersey Shore sponsored. I, I thought it was just like a Jersey Shore. No, 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 no. It wasn't, it wasn't sponsored by them. But I mean, it, they just called it the Jersey Shore Festival. But, you know, when you say a name like the Jersey Shore, people don't think Atlantic City and Wildwood. They think up north where, you know, they filmed the number one MTV show of all time. Right, so right. that's what I thought of when I heard it. And I was like, that would be so cool to play. And then I found out it was on the boardwalk. and you know, there were 150 other bands and I was like, oh, this is even cooler. So I'm so hyped about that. And uh, I get there and it's like, it's starting to rain. I'm like, oh, this is, this is lovely. And I was playing in a bar at the time and I get up there and I start playing and I'm looking around and there's this big, huge pole dead center of the States. It's blocking me. And I'm just like, you know what? It's not even about how many people are here. It's not about, you know, how it sounds. It's just about you know, just having that experience and everything I've went through and I could play in bars the rest of my life and I would honestly be happy. 
Hell yeah, that's that's perseverance. That's 